pessoal, ao meu lado tenho o Silvan, o responsável pelos torneios antes uh, da SLC Paris, ou seja, pelos qualificadores e pelos torneios durante a SLC Paris e vamos então uh, tentar obter o ponto de vista da organização sobre este evento. Hello Silvan. Hello. Silvan, let's talk a little bit about what happened here in the last four days. Um, we we had uh, a lot of tournaments. I don't I, I don't know how many. How many? Seven. Seven official tournaments. And uh, we had people from a lot of areas all over the world. Um, how many players and staff do you think that you got here? Uh, we had something like um, more of uh, 400 uh, players from, um, if I am correct, uh, 39 countries, different countries coming from around the world. And uh, here our staff is uh, more than uh, 100 people. Was it easy for you to get in touch with, with people from so many different countries and cultures and to organize this event that, in our perspective, looked very well organized? Thank you. Uh, it's never uh, an easy task. Of course, uh, it's a project of uh, one year each time. Uh, um, we are very, very, we work very, very hard uh, to do this. Uh, we are a bit tired, but very happy of how it went. Uh, it's it's not so difficult to, to work with all these countries. It's it's even very interesting, interesting for both of them and us to meet uh, each other, and um, a lot of them. Uh, also um, went also in different uh, other tournaments uh, every year so uh, it, it's not the first time they came in France for some of them or in other countries so uh, uh, for them it's not difficult and after in some other country uh, we work with national partner and uh, for each of this country uh, there is a players who is coming but also uh, staff with them so uh, this staff of all these national organizers help us to make the link with uh, the players who for example don't speak very well english they help us very uh, they help us a lot and do you know about the fans uh, we have uh, especially in the first three days a lot of fans here around the, the press area um, do you have any idea about how many people were uh, in this uh, ESWC or uh, in the Paris Games Week? I think uh, for this year, for of Paris Games Week, it's something like uh, 300,000, I think, people. 300,000 people, that's a lot of people to see video games. And um, a little bit about the Paris Games Week and ASWC. Um, we heard some people saying during these days that maybe SWC should return to being just ESWC and not being part of the Paris Games Week because um, the, there are some restrictions to players and to, to, um, to the fans and not everybody's happy. What do as as organizer of part of the organization uh, part of the organization of this event have to say about that? Uh, we know that uh, before uh, 2011 it was uh, it wasn't inside uh, Paris Games Week. Uh, so here uh, since three years uh, we are really happy to be welcomed by Paris Games Week. Uh, but of course it's not maybe the same spirit as uh, before 2011. Uh, where we were alone uh, to organize the ESWC and uh, Paris Games Week give, gives us um, some constraints, of course, to organize the event, uh, constraints of uh, space, of uh, uh, noise, uh, uh, of course, uh, on, no, also on uh, Schkodel because it's open only uh, between 9 a.m. and uh, 7 p.m. Uh, or before we have uh, uh, we had a, a large uh, time to organize each day's uh, tournaments. Uh, so there is constraints, but there is also a lot of advantage because uh, we meet a lot of more spectators uh, than before. Uh, never we, we never before we could touch uh, so many people and show esports to so many people. So there is constraints, uh, uh, yes, but there is also advantage to um, to to make more people discover what is esports. Uh, and uh, th there is an event uh, really um, well organized and uh, turn uh, for the players' uh, um, conditions, really turn about this, but the, you, you need also event uh, turn for the spectators uh, to make uh, esports grow. 
Yeah, it's true. Uh, I also wanted to ask you uh, uh, something about the Portuguese qualifier. Uh, as you've heard, uh, there were some trouble, uh, some problems uh, with the organization of the Portuguese event. Um, most of the teams, I think all of the Portuguese teams, had to pay for the trips. What I want to ask you is, um, when you buy a NSWC license, you get the license for one year, correct? Yes, uh, usually. It depends on the country, on the, on the contract, but uh, usually it's for one year. And after that year, uh, if something like this happens, are there any consequences, uh, cons consequences uh, for uh, any, any people from Portugal that in the next year wants to organize this event? Well, uh, we are uh, like players uh, disappointed on uh, how it went on, uh, of course, that uh, our national uh, Portuguese uh, organizer can't finally pay for the trip, uh, the travel on accommodation of players. And we had to thank uh, the players who come here to pay by themselves and also the sponsors of these teams to pay for coming at the AWC. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, the hardest situation for us when uh, uh, it happens to, to have this national organization, national final, and then our partner finally can't pay for, for, for the travel on accommodation. Uh, for us, it, it's really, it's really hard. Uh, of course, uh, when something like happens and it does, it don't happen often at all. Uh, we, of course, we will not work again with uh, the the organization who couldn't pay for the, the 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 previous year. But for example, if I want to organize the SWC, uh, will I be penalized for what happened this year? No, it's not. Uh, it's not something which will affect the country. No, not at all. Uh, we are open to every country, and never we will uh, close the door of a country. It won't be near the WC or on World Cup if we, we do that. Uh, we had issue with uh, this, the organizer of this year, but of course uh, we will. Uh, try to have uh, again uh, a national qualification in Portugal for uh, the next year and uh, we will work to to make everything perfect for the next year to don't have this kind of issue but never it will close the door for uh, a country uh, of course I have one last question for you uh, it's, a, it's a difficult one we we spoke about the play with with some of the players, yes. uh, and for example, myself included. I, I'm I, as we spoke before. I told you I've been a, a player for a long, long time, and in many years ago, when you thought about ESWC, you thought the, on the biggest events on uh, electronic sports. Nowadays, there are more turn, uh, more events with more prize money. Uh, more teams. Um, do you think that it's the ESWC that stopped growing, or the other tournaments were just went so uh, so big that the ESWC scale? It's not. I mean, do you think that the other tournaments have shut down the ESWC window? Uh, it's not the problem, it's good to see other tournaments like DreamHack, for example, grow a lot. Uh, the problem was, as you may know, that uh, Game Service who organized uh, ESWC from 2003 to 2008 uh, closed its door in 2009. And uh, when it uh, um, came back in 2011, uh, we have to, uh, to, to start again and to, to fight to, to make your place uh, in esports. Uh, um, so uh, it's not uh, it's not the other event, and it's good that this other this other event uh, are, are are good. Um, we we are not. Um, if you see um, tournaments like Shootmania and FIFA, uh, Counter Strike even, and uh, for example, so, so Strike Mania, I, I don't think uh, there is a lot of other tournaments uh, bigger than the SWC. Um, of course, uh, uh, the Dota 2 tournament is uh, less uh, impressive like uh, the international, but uh, what changed also uh, regarding uh, the years of 2003 to 2008 is that uh, the, game, the editor games uh, now is organizing their own events 
and they have a lot of more financial resources than our company. We are not a big company, we are a little company and we fight each year to organize the SBC. It's not an easy task at all. And uh, when you have uh, this kind of um, editors now who organize their own um, World Cup, um, it's difficult, difficult uh, to compare the SBC to them because they have a lot more financial resources to organize, to put a lot of prize money. And so, uh, we are uh, coming, coming back year after year, we are trying to grow year after year now since uh, the rebound of 2011. Uh, it can't be big as maybe uh, years before, in, uh, in, it will take maybe a few, a few years uh, now. But uh, we are not in a, a run to have the biggest prize money uh, because uh, it will be difficult to have uh, one million dollars uh, like uh, the International for the tattoo, for example. We will try to have something uh, different, for example, than the International, to have uh, more different countries, uh, less maybe less uh, uh, cash prize, of, of course, but uh, more different countries to have uh, not always the same best teams uh, who will fight uh, uh, again and again, but have different country and like you said different culture who will come for example for the tattoo we have uh, teams from south africa brazil south korea uh, it's also interesting to give them a place in esports and uh, not always to, to the same thank you so much sylvan for your time and thank you for thank you to Freilider to come here to cover the tournament it's it's our pleasure thank you very much e aí pessoal foi a entrevista com o Silva Uh, fiquem atentos, teremos ainda hoje mais entrevistas. Obrigado.